Right now, it is time for us to take a look at sports, and we kick things off with horse racing. And we've got Mike Kazi with us. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. So, uh, uh, has uh, has has the weather been good, and has your have your picks been okay at uh, up up there at Saratoga? Yeah, we've been doing all right. And sorry about last week, but I didn't have a racing form to do it with. And if I don't have that, I can't pick. <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's, but going back two weeks ago, last time we picked the Arlington Million, we had the winner, Santine, right on top. So we had a winner two weeks ago when we last picked. All right. Well, what's coming up this weekend? Travers weekend. Big weekend. Big weekend. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. There's some, some bad racing up there for Travers Day. There's... There's one race with a, a big, overwhelming favorite that you can't play. There's another one with five horses in it. Um, Travers Day isn't what it used to be. But nonetheless, well, we got four for tomorrow because I missed last week. But we'll go through these rather quickly. Um, in the eighth race is the Allen Jerkins. One, uh, it's a grade one on seven furlongs on the main track. And the main track's been getting very tight lately. It's been very speed favoring in the turf as well. Um, so with that in mind... Uh, my top pick in the Jerkins is going to be the one, Conager. Um, from the rail, this horse has a ton of speed. Should play, say, come cat me if you can. So that's going to be my pick in here. Um, and another one of those overwhelming favorites, Jack Christopher, who ran in a Haskell about a month and a half ago and got smashed. Um, the horse is a miler. Back to a one-turn, seven-furlong sprint. I expect this horse to be better, but way, way over bet, which is the reason why I'm going with Conager. And the other third horse in here is the eight, Gunite. This horse should be just off the pace, not very far off the pace, where if either speed fails, this horse should be right there to pounce. So a one six eight box in the eighth race, the Jerkins going seven furlongs. Um, the ninth race is the grade one personal ensign, a mile and an eighth. This is for fillies and mares. Um, this is another one of those five-horse races. Um, the only reason why I'm picking it is because Clarier, and my screen just moved. And um, Malafat have been going at each other all summer. And one horse, the big horse from last year, has been sitting on the sidelines. Uh, that's the horse I'm going with this weekend. So in, in the grade one, let me get back to it, um, personal ensign, from the rail again, Latruska's the speed. And pace makes the race. Um, there's no other speed in this race. I expect Latruska to have the lead on top and, and walk around the track. Um, the other two horses, Clariel and Mal- Malathot, they'll could be coming late, but I think Latruska's speed from the rail will get it done. So the one is my pick in the personal ensign, and if you want a cheap exact, the three or the five should round it out. The tenth race is the Sword Dancer, a mile and a half on the inner turf, and this week inner t- and, and both turf courses have held speed a lot better. With that being said, we're going to go to the seven horse, Tribute Fan, to go wire to wire here. Last seen, this horse ran in, in, again on Haskell Day in the UN, had the lead, spit the bit late. But again, with the track being in, its, in this horse's favor, I think this horse can carry the distance. So the seven, Tribute Fan, will be my top pick. The closer six, Gufo, will round out my exacta. And a long shot, Mirror Mission who will be a closer, and if anybody closes, I think this horse will as well. The 10 will round out a try. So the 7, Tribute Fan, the 6, Gufo, and the 10, Mirror Mission, will be my picks in the Sword Dancer. Going on to the Travers, grade 1, mile and a quarter on the main track. Uh, My picks are an anti-Chad Brown pick. Um, I'm not going to get into the news about it, but if you want to find out what Chad Brown did and Naira hasn't suspended him, uh, just Google Chad Brown, and you'll, it'll, it'll pop up. Um, two horses I'm looking at here. One is the one horse, Cyberknife, who won the, the, the Haskell at Monmouth with a, a, a real rail-skimming ride by Giroux. The ride's the reason why the horse got the race. Baffert should have won the race, but uh, Mike Smith gave that horse a nightmare ride, thought he had the race won, and Cyberknife came up the rail and took it away from him. But my top pick is going to be the Derby winner. A lot of people aren't, don't like this horse for whatever reason. Uh, but this horse has sat out since the Belmont, regrouped, is training very, very well for this race, is, is, looks, looks to be full of himself, um, trained well at Churchill, came up to Saratoga, tore it up going 59-4 and four easily on the, ma- on the main track. So this horse is sharp again, ready to roll. 
You get 10 to 1 on the Derby winner in the Travers tomorrow, folks. And you might not see that again, and I'm going to take it. So I'm going to go with the two rich strike in the, in the Travers tomorrow with the one cyber knife to round up my exacta. All right, that Chad Brown incident, <clears throat> uh, what he's being accused of uh, and being was arrested for, uh, is, is absolutely just... He wasn't uh, arrested. He was the problem. He, he wasn't arrested. He was let out on bail on his own recognizance. And I have from very, very, very reliable sources that everything you hear is true. He's, he's accused of choking somebody. He's, uh, and throwing her down the uh, stairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's... Uh, and... Uh, and uh, there's, you know, there, and I guess in and life, there's a reason why it happened, but I'm not going into yeah. it. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But there's a reason why he choked the woman and went down the stairs, and it's not a very good reason, folks. You know, and, and it's it goes along with once again these people, these wealthy people in sports, just thinking yep. they, they live in a different world. I mean, this is a big bad shot for Naira. I mean, why is this guy still allowed to train? He should be banned from the grounds per. Further, pending further investigation. That's exactly right. Just like right. they dragged Bobby Baffert through the coals for nothing. The Naira banned Bobby Baffert on hearsay, but there, here you have hard evidence on him assaulting someone, and Chad Brown's allowed to go on with business as usual. Absolutely horrific. You're right. You, you charge somebody, uh, you, you, you ban them, uh, put them on suspension pending the investigation. That's Absolutely. It. That's, they that's didn't do any of that. It's, it's, it's absolutely horrific what this guy's allowed to get away with. And he's walking around with that smug smile on his face like, uh, yeah, okay, I'm Teflon. Absolutely horrible. All right, I want to go to one, one real quick, real good news story in sports, especially baseball. The Baltimore Orioles have rebuilt on their back, and that's nice to see. Yeah, and, and they got rid of two big players. They got rid of Mancini, who's producing real well for the Astros, and they got rid of another guy, arguably their two best players, and they keep on winning. Yeah. 65 and 59. and uh, I think they have the best record in baseball since the end of May. Yeah, they, 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 uh, and they're a young club, and that means that uh, they're going to have some pretty good baseball in Baltimore for several years now. Well, we'll see about that, because yeah. it depends on when these guys' contracts are yeah. up. Because unless the Orioles pay them, they're going to jump. But I, I don't think it's a, it's a big talent thing with Baltimore. I think it's about cohesion of a team, which you don't see in baseball much more. Yeah. They're a team that gets they play well together. They pick each other up. Maybe the Yankees should watch some Oreo videos. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just I've been watching them all year long, and it's just yep. and and they're they're not. It's real. It's a, it's a real thing. They're a, they're a real nice, solid baseball team again. They fight. They do the little things. They're, they're, they're a baseball team. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's all you can say about it. They're not, they're not a launch and lift team that live and die by the home run. Not even close. You know, you and can, that, that's why they're winning baseball and, games. And compare them to, to, to what, uh, what San Diego's doing with all the money that San Diego spent. Mm, and how's that working out? Yeah. People that's, were saying once, once they got Soto, oh, that, that, that doesn't matter about the regular season. They're going to be forced to be reckoned with in the playoffs. Well, you know what? First, you got to make the playoffs, yeah. and the way they're playing, it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's just a two two total opposite stories in baseball, and it's I just I, it's just good to see the O's back to me. Yeah, anyways. I hope they make the. I hope, you know, I'm not expecting a lot of damage to, for them if they make the playoffs, but just them making the playoffs is a gigantic story this year. Hey, they're only two and a half games out. Two and a half yeah. games out of the playoffs. And I mean, from where they were to where they are is gigantic. Yeah, amazing. All yeah, right, I Mike. agree 100%. All right, Mike, we'll speak to you next week. You got it, guys. Have a good one. Take care. Uh, Mike Kazi with a look at uh, horse racing here on Robin Hood Radio. We might as well go into the rest of the sports, and uh, we'll go over the, uh, the scoreboard for you uh, from Major League Baseball. Uh, yesterday, the Dodgers lost to Tampa Bay 8-3. to St. Louis with Chicago eight to three. Seattle defeated Cleveland three to one. Philadelphia over Cincinnati four nothing. Baltimore over the White Sox four three. The Mets over Colorado three to one. Uh, meanwhile, Toronto got by Boston six to five. Minnesota lost to Houston six three. The Yankees over Oakland thirteen to four. And it was the bottom third of the order that did all the hitting in that game. Uh, so uh, that is uh, that is that is the way things look in Major League Baseball. 
But uh, you go to the standings and what we were talking about, the Baltimore Orioles, uh, they sit uh, only two and a half games out of the playoffs. A record of 65 and 59. Yankees have a seven and a half game lead over Tampa Bay. Eight games over Toronto. Uh, Cleveland uh, has a four game lead over Minnesota. They're opening things up. Houston, a 12 game lead over Seattle. Uh, the Mets have a two-game lead over Atlanta. That has turned into a dog fight. And Philadelphia now is just two and a half games uh, out of the playoffs. St. Louis with a game and a half lead, pardon me, with a six-game lead over Milwaukee. And the Dodgers have a 19 and a half game lead over San Diego. As we said, Baltimore, the bright spot of the season, San Diego, with what they did at the trade deadline and the way they've been playing since then the other side of the coin. Uh, and to get away from what happened in uh, in racing with a trainer, uh, in football, Bills Matt Arazia and two former college teammates have been named in a gang rape lawsuit. Uh, the guy's been playing real well in the preseason. Uh, he's a 22-year-old special teams player. Uh, nickname, his nickname is Punt God. According to the Los Angeles Times, a lawsuit in San Diego accuses him of having sex with minors outside a home, later bringing her to an off-campus party where she was uh, repeatedly raped. The alleged victim, who was in high school at the time, said she was in and out of consciousness but can recall the moments where the men reportedly and repeatedly assaulted her. Just uh, the, the grimy side of life, the grimy side of sports. Deion Sanders, on the other hand, as a head coach in college football, laid down the law for his Jackson State players. Be the perfect gentleman, or we'll see you, basically. All right, um... Uh, other news, uh, well, there's, there's football being played. There's football being played. Already one of the New York Jets wants to be traded. Denzel Mims requests a trade because he has been given no opportunities. <clears throat> so um, he wants to be traded. We're, not even, you know, we're just in the beginning of, uh, <laughs> of preseason. All right. And uh, for the Yankees, uh, their uh, reliever, Zach Britton, had Tommy John surgery. Well, he has made his first appearance in the minor leagues in 11 months. So he's uh, back on the mend, Zach Britton. And that is a check on sports this morning on Robin Hood Radio. <laughs> 